Hi, it's Katrina. Number nine, Anna Chapman. I suppose you could say that being a spy is in Anna Chapman's blood. The beautiful and notorious Russian spy's father was a high-ranking KGB official. After earning her master's degree in economics, she met her ex-husband, British citizen Alex Chapman. They married in 2001, and Anna gained British citizenship. The pair divorced in 2006, and in 2009, she moved to New York City. Anna lived in the Financial District, a posh high-end neighborhood that includes Wall Street. She claimed to be the CEO of a company that sold real estate internationally. But as it turned out, she was actually in the U.S. as a spy, commissioned by the Russian government. She was a member of a network of Russian sleeper agents known as the Illegals Program. The Russian Foreign Intelligence Service had tasked the agents with posing as ordinary citizens in search of business contracts that would hopefully lead them to useful intelligence. Unfortunately for Anna, the FBI was one step ahead of the network, and they caught her accepting a fake passport as part of a sting. She pled guilty to conspiracy to act as an agent on behalf of a foreign government and was deported back to Russia in 2010. Britain revoked her citizenship, much to her dismay. Since then, Anna has worked for the Russian government as a model and in show business. Her ex-husband died in 2015 at the young age of 36, but his family insists that there were no suspicious circumstances surrounding the untimely tragedy. In 2017, Anna made international headlines yet again for her Instagram account, which was allegedly chock full of pro-Donald Trump propaganda. Number 8. Jonathan Pollard Some people would argue that everyone has a price, that even the most morally upstanding individual would commit a huge betrayal for the right amount of money. While there is no saying whether this is a universal truth, it's certainly true in some cases. Take, for example, Jonathan Pollard, a former U.S. Navy intelligence analyst who passed highly classified documents onto Israel during the 1980s. He began sharing top-secret information after meeting Israeli Air Force veteran Avium Sela, who was pursuing a degree at New York University at the time. Pollard volunteered to work as a spy and told Sela that the U.S. military was withholding important information from Israel. He would later use this reasoning as his argument for why he chose to violate the U.S. government's strict confidentiality standards. It's worth noting, however, that Pollard benefited financially from the arrangement. Within the first few days of sharing information with Sela, he received a $10,000 cash payment for his services. He eventually made as $2,500 per month from the Israelis, which was quite a bit of money back then, especially in addition to the salary he received from working for the U.S. government. Pollard also received bonuses in the form of hotel rooms, food, and jewelry stipends. What about you? Is this enough money to start spilling your secrets? Let me know in the comments below. As he eventually learned, all good things come to an end. In 1985, a colleague became suspicious of Pollard's activities and alerted their superiors. An investigation ensued, and supervisors noticed that he was accessing documents that had little or nothing to do with his work duties. The FBI got involved and searched his home, where they found classified documents that were not supposed to be there. Pollard and his wife Anne tried to gain asylum through the Israeli embassy in Washington, D.C., but they were turned away and were left with no choice but to face accountability for their actions. Pollard pleaded guilty to espionage charges and was sentenced to life in prison. He was granted Israeli citizenship in 1995 while he was still incarcerated. In 2015, he was released from federal prison. When Pollard's parole expired in late 2020, he and his wife moved to Israel, where they planned to stay permanently. They received a warm welcome from Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu when they arrived to start their new chapter. Number 7. Mata Hari Margaretha Gertruda McLeod, better known as Mata Hari, was born in the Netherlands in 1876. She was an exotic dancer and courtesan, or high-end escort, who rose to fame based on the backstory that she was of royal Indonesian descent. At the time, it was common for entertainers to present fictitious histories as a way of bolstering their exotic reputation. Mata Hari's career really took off in 1903, after she traveled to Paris and began performing there. She became a mistress to a millionaire and enjoyed great success. The controversial dancer was so well known that numerous imitators sprang up throughout the region, 
hoping to cash in on her lucrative act. During World War I, the Netherlands remained neutral, enabling Matahari to freely cross international borders. She split her time between the Netherlands and France by traveling to and from the countries via Britain and Spain. It was during this time that she met and fell in love with Captain Vadim Maslov, a 23-year-old Russian pilot serving in the French military. He was wounded, and Matahari was told that she could only see her lover if she became a spy for France. She was tasked with seducing Crown Prince Wilhelm of Germany in hopes of gathering vital intelligence. But the prince's involvement in the war effort was minimal, and Matahari failed to procure any useful information about the Germans. She was then accused of spying for Germany, and in 1917, she was executed in France by a firing squad. To this day, many believe that Mata Hari was scapegoated and that her role as a spy was wildly exaggerated. Some even claim that she was innocent altogether and simply wound up in a situation bigger than she could handle. On the other hand, some historians blame her for as many as 50,000 deaths. Number 6. Aldrich Ames who better to recruit as a Soviet spy than a CIA agent who speaks Russian and specializes in Russian intelligence? Meet Aldrich Ames, an American-born man who established a solid career with the CIA years before he turned on his employer and his country. The USSR's intelligence agency, famously known as the KGB, was his area of expertise. Ames first started spying for the Soviet Union in 1985. After KGB agents at the USSR Embassy in Washington, D.C. offered him $50,000 for his services, he began passing on confidential CIA and FBI information to a Russian diplomat later that year. Over the following years, the KGB paid him over $2 million to meet with agents and to leave documents at prearranged drop spots throughout Washington, D.C. But as Ames would eventually learn, his illicit fortune would come at a cost. He was finally caught and arrested for espionage in 1994, nearly a decade after he started working for the KGB. His wife, Rosario, was also charged for aiding and abetting his activities. They both pleaded guilty. Aldrich received a life sentence without the possibility of parole, and Rosario was sentenced to 63 months in prison. Number 5. Cecily Pearl Witherington Cecily Pearl Witherington was known by many names throughout her lifetime including Genevieve Touzelan and Pearl Cornioli. She was born to British parents in Paris in 1914. In 1940, Cecily and her family escaped from German-occupied France and fled to London. To help France escape from German control, she began smuggling weapons into the country in 1943 as a trained special operations executive courier. Cecily went the extra mile and took control of her superior's troops when he was arrested leading them in a 14-hour battle against the Nazis. They killed over 1,000 German soldiers and cornered another 18,000 into surrendering. Naturally, the Nazis saw Cecily as a major threat. They offered a 1 million franc bounty in exchange for her death. But much to their dismay, her body was never delivered. She survived the war and lived to the ripe old age of 93. Because she was a woman, Cecily was deemed ineligible to receive the Military Cross Award. Instead, she was offered a prestigious rank in the Member of the Order of the British Empire. She rejected the offer, pointing out that the work she did superseded the standards for a civil medal. She said there was nothing civil about what I did. I didn't sit behind a desk all day. In 2006, shortly before her death, Cecily finally received her well-deserved parachute wings. Perhaps it was worth the wait, as this is a higher honor than any of the awards she was previously considered for. Number 4. Virginia Hall Virginia Hall was born to a wealthy Baltimore family in 1906. She could have married into her privileged class, but she longed for adventure and a career even after losing her leg in a hunting accident. Hall became an ambulance driver for the French Army during World War II. She eventually crossed paths with a British intelligence officer who connected her with training to become a spy in the newly created Special Operations Executive. Posing as a reporter, Hall conducted interviews and gathered intelligence for the agency. She had a very noticeable limp, earning her the nickname the Limping Lady of Lyon. But nevertheless, she evaded the Gestapo's suspicions by playing on their sexist belief that women were incapable of being skilled spies. 
The quick-thinking amputee established reliable connections and used clever disguises to quietly organize a powerful underground resistance movement that smuggled crucial intelligence reports across enemy lines. Paul even managed to break 12 fellow agents out of an internment camp without being captured. As the war intensified and suspicions grew, she fled France only to return under the Special Operations Branch of the American Office of Strategic Services, or the OSS. Paul proved imperative to the resistance movement, calling in airdrops for fighters who went deep into France and reclaimed territory before the Allies advanced into the region. After the war, she worked for the CIA, never speaking publicly about her critical contributions to the Allied war effort. Her heroic accomplishments have only come under the spotlight in recent years. Number 3. Anthony Blunt Despite being British-born, Anthony Blunt became a spy for the Soviet Union. Historians believe he may have been recruited as far back as 1934, when he first visited the country. Blunt joined the British Army in 1939, and later on during World War II, he began working at Windsor Castle, where his superiors were unaware of his Marxist allegiances. Between 1941 and 1945, he provided Soviet intelligence officials with 1,771 documents that were never supposed to fall into their hands. Many people caught on that Blunt was a double agent, long before British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher admitted it to the public in 1979. In fact, some people knew that he was a spy as early as 1950, when some higher-ups at his job learned about but ignored his communist ties. He was so efficient at producing documents that even the Soviets became suspicious, wondering at times if Blunt was in fact a triple agent or playing multiple sides. The fact that a spy had penetrated the heart of the British establishment was certainly embarrassing. He had confessed years before Thatcher's announcement in exchange for immunity from prosecution, but the British government kept this dirty little secret to itself knowing that the public and the media would not be very happy once they found out. Number 2. Julius and Ethel Rosenberg As the Cold War heated up, paranoia ran increasingly high among both the American populace and the governmental ranks. Anyone suspected of aiding a communist agenda fell under immediate and severe scrutiny. During the early 1950s, the U.S. government accused an American couple named Julius and Ethel Rosenberg of spying for the Soviet Union. While they were both members of the Communist Party, Julius was an engineer and Ethel was an aspiring actress. There was little reason to think that they were involved in any organized efforts to undermine democracy, until Julius's brother-in-law confessed to espionage, implicating him in the process. The evidence against Ethel seemed minimal at best, but both she and Julius were arrested. Officials thought that charging Ethel with espionage would make Julius more likely to confess. But they were wrong. The couple steadfastly maintained their innocence, even when it meant facing the death penalty. Julius and Ethel Rosenberg were executed by the electric chair at Sing Sing in 1953, making them the only Americans who were put to death for espionage throughout the entire Cold War. Their sons, Michael and Robert, spent decades advocating for their innocence, claiming that the Rosenbergs were the product of irrational Cold War paranoia. But after the Soviet Union fell, a lot of information revolving around the couple was declassified. It appears as though the U.S. government may have been justified in its suspicions after all. Decoded cables revealed that Julius was a courier and a recruiter for a Soviet spy ring, while Ethel helped recruit her brother into the organization. Number 1. Nancy Wake Nancy Wake was a New Zealand-born journalist who took a drastic career turn during World War II when she joined the French resistance and helped British soldiers escape from France. Her superior, Vera Atkins, would later recall Wake as a top-notch recruit, stating everything she did, she did well. She started out as a spy trainee and quickly rose through the ranks, eventually becoming the administrative head of around 7,000 fighters. Wake also claimed to have participated in a raid that destroyed the Gestapo's headquarters. The Gestapo sought Wake's capture. In fact, at one point, she became their number one most wanted individual, with a five million bounty being offered on her head. Thankfully, the Germans never got their hands on Wake. She was credited with saving thousands of lives during the war and received the United Kingdom's George Medal for her heroic work. Wake lived in Australia after the war and then returned to Britain in 2001, 
where she remained until her death in 2011 at age 98. Thanks for watching! Who knew there were so many incredible real life spy stories out there? If you'd like to learn about more of history's most notorious spies, let me know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time! Bye!